Okay, welcome back everyone. Well, let's get started again in the afternoon sessions. I'm sure it's going to be a good time. Haven't you been challenged in your thinking during the morning? Just starting to think it's great, wonderful. And uh, it takes a little time for these concepts to get in because they shift how you view your life and your responsibilities and how you interact with them. And uh, I had some very good feedback in the in between time. Very good. Okay, so before we go any further, uh, I want to just, uh, for the sake of several who are uh, not baptized in the Spirit or not uh, released in, the, in tongues, I just want to just speak about being filled with the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. So I want to sh- sh- speak about it a little bit, just so faith lifts up. I want to show you how you can receive. And then what we'll do is get those who don't speak in tongues, we'll get you to come towards the front. We'll get everyone else to gather around one big crowd, and then we'll just pray all together. And uh, that takes it away from being sort of self-conscious that maybe uh, you, you just haven't got the breakthrough yet. So... Uh, let me just give just several scriptures related to being filled with the Holy Ghost. Firstly, very clear, Jesus' ministry, uh, he began his ministry with an encounter with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the Spirit of God came on him, and the heavens opened up, and he heard the voice of God. And from that point on in his life, he encountered an open heaven, an open spirit world. He encountered his Father's voice and the leading of the Spirit of God. And uh, so before he left, in Luke 24, he says this, In verse 49, he says, Behold, I send the promise of the Father on you. Wait in the city of Jerusalem till you be clothed with power from on high. Now, he's not talking here about being born again. He's talking about an empowerment or a clothing. In uh, John chapter uh, 20, uh, he talks about about sending them. And so in John 20, he says this, in verse 21, As the Father sent me, so I send you. So he's commissioning them again. And he said to this, when he had done this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. So what happened was he imparted to them the Holy Spirit. He, they were born again at that point in time. The uh, parallel, of course, when God created man, he breathed into him the breath of life and man become a living soul. Now Jesus, the last Adam, breathes into his followers and they are born again. And he imparted through breathing the flow of the Spirit of God. But he did say again, Acts 1 and verse uh, 4, he said, Being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. For he said, John baptized you in water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. So now he's saying, even though they're born again, before they begin their ministry assignment, he wants them to, One, to be clothed with power. He uses different language to describe the same thing. He calls it the promise of the Father. He calls it being clothed or being endued from on high with power. He also calls it being baptized or immersed into the spirit realm. And so what he's referring to, and he uses the word baptized in the spirit, he's referring to us being immersed into the realm of the spirit. And so the baptism in the spirit, being baptized in the spirit, is an entry experience into the engaging the spiritual world, but it's only an entry experience. It's a great entry experience. It's a powerful entry experience, but the expectation is there'd be other things happen once we've had that experience. And uh, then we reel, of course, in Acts chapter 2, how the Holy Ghost came upon them, and suddenly the sound came from heaven, like a rushing mighty wind that filled the whole house where they were sitting, appeared to them and divided tongues like fire sat on every one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So we see here in Acts 2, the first experience being baptized in the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost came on them. The power of God literally broke out of heaven upon them, and the first consequence of being filled was to overflow vocally. And uh, it says, they spoke as the Holy Spirit gave them. So you have to speak. It's the Holy Spirit that gives the language. So the language of tongues is not a language that we learn. It's an imparted flow of the Holy Spirit into our spirit. So the Spirit of God clothes our spirit, and we choose to speak. So you can't expect God to open your mouth and talk. You've actually got to speak. You've got to actually do the speaking. They spoke as the Holy Ghost gave them utterance. And it says people could understand uh, some of them speaking. They spake in our tongues the wonderful works of God. So clearly it was a dramatic experience because people said, hey, it looks like they've been drinking wine. You know, they're, oh, they're full of joy and laughing and filled with the Holy Ghost. 
There are other examples in the Bible of the same thing. Acts chapter 10, the Holy Ghost falls upon the Gentiles. First sign, they began to speak in tongues. Acts chapter 19, Paul goes to a group of believers that have been baptized in the Holy Spirit, haven't even heard. So he taught them, laid hands on them, they were filled with the Spirit, began to speak in tongues and to move in the gifts of the Spirit. So clearly in Scripture we see this uh, encounter with the Holy Spirit, the filling up, the overflow with tongues. So what about the gift of tongues? Let me give you a couple of things on it and then we talk about receiving quickly and get you a chance to receive. So in reading of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 14, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit is praying. My understanding is unfruitful, but my spirit is praying. So there is a part of you, your spirit man, that can feel, sense, smell, experience, see, hear, also speak. Your spirit is speaking. And you're speaking the language that God gives you. So it's not coming from your mind where you're thinking what you're saying. It's a flow from inside. It says when we speak in tongues, it says that we are speaking and it builds up our spirit man. So I don't want to go into a long uh, teaching on tongues. It's a whole teaching around itself. But the gift of tongues primarily is a communication uh, flow with the Holy Spirit to enable you to pray, to praise, to pray when you don't know what to pray, and it builds your spirit man. Have a think about this. When I went to uh, Asia, whenever I go to Asia, I'm in a totally new culture. And one of the things about the culture, it has its own language. And if I don't know the language of the culture, it's difficult to operate in that culture. Everything is unfamiliar. So one of the first things they give me when I get there is an interpreter, someone to help me with the language. The language is important to living and experiencing the culture properly. In fact, if I've got no one who helps me with the language, I can't even do anything there. So just taking from a natural level, flowing in another culture is, is highly difficult and ineffective if you have no one to help you with language. So the same thing, the realm of the spirit is not the same as the natural realm. The realm of the spirit is much more intense. And so we need a language to express in that realm. When God speaks to you, those of you know, so most of you know computers, I suppose. When God speaks to you, uh, it's like if you've ever in your computer received a zip file. A zip file, you just download it, there it is, you've got a zip file. Now when you unzip it, there's just all this information in the zip file. So when you receive from God, you can receive a download really quickly, but as it takes time and when it opens up, there's so much in it. And praying in tongues is a vital part of helping us engage in the realm of the Spirit. So how do we receive? We receive uh, uh, very, very simply. The Bible says in, in Mark 11, when you stand praying, whatever you desire, you must really want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. Number two, when you desire, when you pray, we've got to ask God. We've got to come specifically saying, oh, this is what I want. Three, we must believe that we receive it. Whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive it, and then following that, you will have it. So when you pray, there has to be the believing, I will receive it. If I come saying, well, let's just give it a go and see what God will do, that's not believing. That's waiting till you see, then you believe. So I get to know from the Bible and from hunger in my heart, this is for me. And I come to him saying, God, I just want to be filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm yielding and surrendering to you. Now, what would stop you flowing in the Spirit and flowing in that expression of tongues? There's, there's, there's probably several things. One would be if you're locked up in the occult or if there is occult bondages that have never been freed, that is a problem and a block for flowing in the things of the Spirit. We assume that that is not true for most of you here today, if not all. So then there are, other, there are two other things that come to mind immediately. One of them is if you've ever had teaching that was anti the Holy Spirit, that creates a blockage around your life from receiving because the words that have come sit in your life and the moment you come to receive they come back to life and they actually stop you so it's important if we've uh, ever been exposed to teaching where people taught against the baptism of the holy spirit and speaking in tongues that you actually renounce that because it creates a barrier to receiving any idea so i know that people that have been in those situations uh, they often have a block because the moment they come to pray their old teaching comes up and argues against receiving 
And so there's no flow from their spirit to a respond to faith. A, another or a third common factor that people have in uh, not letting go in the, uh, in to flow into the, into the language of tongues is uh, strong cognitive control over their life. So when a person has shut down the emotional dimension of their life and shut down that, le- that, that, uh, that right brain aspect, the creative aspect, and just lives out of logic and lives out of reasoning and lives in their mind and thoughts and is disconnected from the heart, then this often is a major block to flowing with the spirit because the moment you come to pray, you're back in your brain trying to work out what to say and analyzing everything that's happening instead of actually letting go control, which is effectively what's happening, and just saying, God, I just surrender. I let my heart, my inner man, just express its love to you through this new language. And uh, it's literally the control of your mind has to, has to let go and allow the, the, the flow from your heart and spirit to just emerge. And uh, I found for me it was a little bit of a difficulty. I got filled with the spirit dramatically and quickly, but then my mind would actually consciously argue. It would reason. I could, I'd be praying in tongues, and I could feel by the joy rising up, and then the mind arguing, arguing, arguing. It's like a lawyer, you know, argues, you know, reasons everything away. And, uh, and, and so strong cognitive control in your life or, or blocks to the emotional area can stop the flow from within your heart because the language of the tongues is a flow of the Holy Spirit in your spirit flowing up outwards through your life. So if you can just surrender control and let go of that air and relax, sometimes people find it when they're in the shower, they relax more and they're able to get going and to flow in the gift of tongues. And, uh, but everyone's got his own way, I guess. But we want to just pray for people to be filled with the Spirit and just get a breakthrough today. And uh, we'll just see what the Lord will do. But if you could just approach it really simply and harmony, God, I don't want to be held back any long. I don't want any blocks. I'm just coming to you right now and I'm letting go or any wrong teaching, any control over my thought, I'm just letting it go to you. I'm just going to worship you in all your beauty, and I'm going to let my mouth speak this new language which you give me. Amen? So we'll do that there. So what we'll do is we'll just uh, make it a little easy for everyone rather than everyone being conscious of themselves. And so we'll get those who would like to be uh, specially released in this area. Why don't you come and just stand around me just in the front. The rest of us all come around and stand around you. So just firstly, those who haven't got a breakthrough in their life, if you'd like to just quickly come and uh, just come up to the front here. So if you just make room for people to come through, just come and stand facing me. You're not facing the camera, that's the one. There we go. <laughs> okay, there we go. Good stuff. Okay, come on now. Come on now. That's right. We've got everyone here. Right, uh, then what I want is for everyone else to come around, surround them. We're going to just love them and be together and, and believe in God for this release today. Okay, now. Okay, just bring everyone else up. That's right. That's the way. Close your eyes and make everyone vanish. That's the simplest thing. Make everyone vanish. If you're thinking about other people or about yourself, you won't let go. All right then. Now, Lord, I'm just asking right now that you would just help. We, we need your help. Some, Lord, have been prayed for before, but, and they haven't had a breakthrough. We don't know why. So we ask, Lord, if there's any reason for there being a blockage, that almost immediately you will bring it to their mind right now. If there's any uh, form of blockage that would stop the flow of your spirit, I'm asking that just right now you would bring the thoughts to their mind. They would begin to see just in a moment what the blockage really is. Lord, if it's pride, unwillingness to let go, Lord, just make it just be clear so they can see that. Lord, if it's a, a block in the emotions, Lord, just to help identify what that is. Lord, if it's wrong teaching or teaching has been contrary to the Holy Spirit, Lord, just ask you to bring that up to the service. Whatever it is that may have caused a block, let it go. Whether it's disappointments and then fear that I'm not good enough to receive anything from God. You know, that's another thing that would stop people. I'm not good enough. And my life is such a mess. You know, that would stop you. That would stop you receiving. But there's no reason. See, God has already made you good enough. You are totally acceptable to him. He loves you very deeply, very dearly. You're very precious. You know, Jesus said these words. If someone asked the Holy Spirit, will God give him a stone? You know, if a father, if a child asks for bread, you know, will he give him a stone or will he give him a serpent? I mean, how much more will the Father give you the Holy Ghost? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to just lead you through a prayer. 
We're going to come and gather around if you're comfortable with that uh, and just lay hands on you to pray for you. And every one of us is just going to worship God together. What I'd like us to do is in a moment after we've prayed through the prayer together, I'd like all of us to begin to speak and then language and speak and honor God together. Amen? Do that together. And the thing is, just relax. Don't try and make something happen. Just say, God, I know you're there. I know the Holy Spirit, I know you're there inside me. Rise up inside me. I just yield my tongue to speak right now. We ready? Okay, I'll lead you in a simple prayer. Jesus, I open my heart to you now. I so much want to be filled with your spirit. I want to have the language of tongues to worship you, to pray effectively. So by faith now, I receive the Holy Ghost. I receive the gift of tongues. I thank you for giving this to me. And I open my heart to honor you now and to speak in this new language. In Jesus' name. Let's take a deep breath and let's all pray together. Holy Spirit, come and fall upon him right now. Let the power of God just come around his life today. Father, in Jesus' name, I just break the controls around his mind and emotions. I release your anointing to flow right now. Let it go. That's right. Let it go. I break every spirit of fear, not being good enough. I break it off your life now. I release the flow of the Holy Ghost. Lord, touch Steve right now. Let the power of God just come around his life right now. That's right. Proactively speak and pray. That's right. Holy Spirit, come upon him. That's right. Let your now speak those words. That's right. You got it. That's right. You got it. Flow. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your power coming on him right now. Right now, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost, come. Thank you, Lord. That's right. Now, just relax. Just relax. Don't try too hard. Just relax. Inside, you just now begin to just see Jesus, and you love him so much. You love him so much. He's been so good to you, so faithful to you. And everything in you wants to just love on him with this new language now. Thank you, Lord. Let your anointing flow right now over her life. Thank you, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, I come against control. I break the power of controlling words, controlling spirits that have crushed and broken a heart. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I release you from those things right now. Father, pour your spirit into a life today. In Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for filling her right now. Thank you, Lord, for the overflow of your love. Thank you, Lord, for the overflow of your love. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing just flowing right now. Come on, Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. That's right, let that language rise up now. Thank you, Spirit of God. I break every lie that I'm not good enough. I break words spoken over you that wounded and broke your spirit. I break those words right now. Thank you, Lord, for your anointing just flowing. That's right. Now just begin to allow your spirit to rise up and just express love. Let's all pray together a little stronger now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Feel him right now. Thank you, Lord. We break control. I come against all control. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I break its hold over your life right now. Thank you, Lord. Loose him right now. Father, release your anointing into his life right now. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come over him right now. Thank you, Lord. How are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Holy cow. Fill them. Long overdue. <laughs> <laughs> Holy Ghost, Philip! Hello, ba 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 ba. She got a bit Holy Ghost, Philip! Right now, the power of God. Thank you, Lord, Philip. See, I got a bit yatta. I got a bit yatta. I got a bit. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost, come on right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love flowing around this life right now. Yella ba 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 ba. She got a bit yatta. Holy Ghost, come. Thank you, Lord. Pour your anointing into his life right now. Feel him, my God. Feel him. Thank you, Lord. Father, right now, just speak. I take authority over grief and disappointment. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I come against the spirit of grief and disappointment. I break its power in your life right now. I command you to release them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Son, I love you. God loves you very deeply. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy Ghost comes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. <laughs> Give me <him> more, Lord. <laughs> Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Come on, let's give the Lord a great clap, shall we? <laughs> Holy Ghost. Fill the Lord. Fill the <laughs> Joy of the Lord. It'll come around alive. <laughs> wow, we've had some really good results. Now you got a freedom? Got a release. That's fantastic. Did you get released today? That's awesome. <laughs> don't, even, don't even go there. <laughs> okay, how are we doing? How are you doing? <laughs> how are you doing? Well, interesting. When you come to that kind of point, suddenly all the stuff you've got in your heart starts to choke up. Huh? And you see, you'll have had a lot of pain and grief and stuff. You push right down. When you push it down, yeah, it's just there near the surface now. <laughs> Holy ghost. That was great fun. Can we just get the air con on a bit? It's really hot in here. Man, I've got hot suddenly. It's off. Maybe it could cool the place a little. Just getting so warm. Wow. Got hot all of a sudden here. <laughs> well, that's great. Don't you love the Holy Ghost? I just love the Holy Ghost. He is so wonderful. He is so wonderful. Man, better keep going so we can get things finished. <laughs> The great presence of God here now. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Well, where we go? Okay, why don't we just, we're just going to look at um, just strengthening your spirit man or building your inner man. I want to share with you a few keys on that, and then we'll look at ministering to people. <laughs> so we're looking at uh, page 19, the notes, and we're just going to jump one section. We'll come back in a moment. Just strengthening or building your spirit man. So, let's, first of all, I want you to just have a look at divine design and, uh, and, and see how God has designed us to function. Because many times we kind of, spiritual things are, they have an appearance as though they're very difficult, whereas in fact they're not difficult. It's just when you don't understand it, it seems just like it's just another world or something. 
But in Genesis 2, 7, God formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. So man is made in the image of God. God is a spirit. We have a spirit dimension to us. So we are a spirit being. You're a human being. You live in a body, but, your body, but you are more than just your body. Your body is called the house you live in. So we have a body we live in, we have a soul where our personality, will, mind, emotions, and memories uh, exist. We also have a spirit, and the spirit part of us enables us to communicate and connect with the whole realm of the spirit. So living and operating as a believer is about living and operating from the flow within our spirit. When man sinned and fell, he lost the spiritual connection, had to live out of his mind and soul. So your spirit has a number of functions. So let me just identify for you some of the functions of your spirit so we can understand them. Number one, your spirit sustains your life. That's something people don't really understand. We kind of think of life as being a fairly natural sort of thing, but notice what it says, the body without the spirit is dead, even so faith without works is dead also. So very clearly, the body without the spirit is dead. So your spirit is what provides the energy that sustains your body. Now I'm sure there's also biochemical processes and so on, that are, uh, the, uh, biological processes which are in place as well. But the Bible is very clear. Without your spirit, your body dies. Your spirit is therefore essential to the functioning of your body. If I chopped off a finger, I could continue to live. Chopped off a couple of legs, still continue to live. So there's a lot you could lose and still live, but you can't live without your spirit. So your spirit is vital to the life that you live on the earth. So your spirit, uh, uh, if the person's spirit is withdrawn, they die. Now the Bible tells us your spirit can be broken. It can be crushed. It can be wounded. So your spirit is quite vulnerable. Your spirit uh, can sense and respond and be affected by what goes on around it. So a person's spirit can be crushed. And when your spirit is broken, it affects your health. So for example, the Bible says that a broken spirit dries the bones. In other words, when your spirit is damaged through trauma, through words, through control, through abuse, then what happens is it doesn't generate the energy that would allow you to live a very vibrant life. Similarly, if your life is dominated by demonic spirits, your spirit is restricted from flowing. And so again, you don't live the free life and the abundant life that, that God has intended for us to have. So a, third, a second thing we notice is that your spirit energizes and inspires your thoughts. Now, here's something. Remember, we got everyone praying in tongues, and we asked you, what was the effect of strong praying in tongues? What did you feel happen to you? And we come up with, actually, your body come alive. You felt like energized? How many felt that? Some of you said this, an interesting thing. You said that your mind cleared. How many had that experience? Your mind cleared. Very good. Now, notice the scripture here. It says, uh, in, uh, in Proverbs 20, verse 27, the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. Now, that's an interesting. The lamp is something that illuminates. So the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. It illuminates or it searches all the deep places of his heart. Here's another scripture, 1 Corinthians 2, 11. Uh, what uh, man knows the things of man, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now, your spirit, we, t we try to describe it in different ways, but your spirit is like an energy source inside you. Your spirit fits into your body like a hand fits inside a glove. So if I was to look at a person, I see through their eyes into the soul and spirit, you're seeing the living person. If the spirit leaves, you look into those same eyes, they're dead and lifeless. Now, your spirit provides life on the inside. It also illuminates your mind. So if God wants to drop things into your mind, he will do it through your spirit. The spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. So when your spirit is flowing, you think clearly. You notice when we got our spirits moving, our heads start to clear. You sit down for a long time, become passive, and your body's inactive, your spirit will start to shut down as well. Stand up, shake your body, move, speak in tongues, and your head clears, just like that. It's, quite, it's just a very simple thing to understand. So uh, how many have, have uh, known this experience that you had a problem you faced and you didn't know what to do about it, so you, we went to bed on it. And in the morning woke up 
and you knew what to do. What part of you was figuring out that problem? It was your spirit. So even though your body is at rest, your spirit through the evening or night is not at rest. It's just alive. It doesn't sleep. So your spirit can commune with God while you're asleep. Your spirit can illuminate your mind with ideas. So imagine your spirit being like a lamp that can just flash an idea into your mind. Where does creativity come? It comes up out of the spirit of a man. So when a person's under control, they can't release creative thoughts because their spirit is, is crushed down. So the spirit of man is the lamp of the Lord. So your spirit's like a flashlight. It will light things up and it will give you insights to yourself. So if you're going to gain insight to your own life, you have to be able to reach into your spirit, into the deep parts of you, and draw from within and tune in to the flow from your spirit. We'll identify that in a moment. We notice when someone's spirit is alive and energized, their whole countenance seems full of life. You ever seen singers on a stage? We say they have what's called charisma. Actually, charisma is just the life of their spirit flowing unhindered through them. And you notice the freedom is incredibly attractive? When someone's really free, you can see it on their, it's like their face is lit up. Have you ever noticed when you've seen people in, say, the Indian culture who got saved, and you see them standing alongside people who are unsaved, they look like they're lit up on the inside. It shows on the countenance. Uh, if someone is under oppression of an evil spirit, they, they look black or dark. So clearly the activity of the human spirit and the spirit of God illuminates and brings life, and it brings ideas to us. So the Holy Spirit can give you many ideas, but he always does it by illuminating your spirit. Third thing about your spirit is this, is your spirit flows out. Your spirit can flow to touch people. In Proverbs 4.23, keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it shall flow the issues of your life. So your spirit's movement is a flowing movement like water, like a river, like a, some form of energy. Jesus said in John 7.38, he who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now notice again the flowing nature of your spirit. So your spirit flows from you. And your spirit actually can fill a whole room. So, for example, I'll give you a few examples. How many of you have closed your eyes, but as you walked near a wall, you could suddenly be aware there was a wall there? Ask yourself, I wonder what part of me knew there was a wall there. Now, of course, if you're moving too quick and don't take notice, you just bump straight into it. But if you were in a per perfectly black wall room, and you started to walk, and you just walked quietly towards knowing there's a wall there, it's almost certain you'll feel the presence of the wall before you actually hit it, especially if your spirit is energized and alive. Have you ever had the experience of someone sneaking up behind you and you suddenly become aware someone is there? How do you become aware your spirit is aware? Uh, have you ever um, been in a room and suddenly so and someone extremely important came into the room or with a lot of authority come in the room, you feel the whole room change? See, so authority is actually tangibly felt. When you get in the person, someone with immense authority, you feel it engage the, the whole room, the atmosphere changes. It, it's a spirit dimension around people's life. Okay? Uh, and, uh, uh, so, the, so, for example, a, a person who is uh, showing up emotions in a very strong way, the influence actually affects the atmosphere. For example... If a person is very anger, angry, you can feel the anger, even if they're not saying anything. You ever met someone who's seething with anger? You can feel it. How do you feel it? Something is emanating out from them. Uh, a person who's peaceful. You ever met someone who's incredibly peaceful? They carry a spirit of peace. When you come near them, you become very calm. It's actually quite nice being in their presence because you feel the peace. Have you ever met someone who had self-pity governing their life? You can literally feel the emanating self-pity and you feel like it's drawing you in and you have to do something or say something and help them or some kind of way. Have you ever been near an arrogant person? An arrogant person, they put out into the atmosphere that they are superior to you, so you feel put down even if nothing much is said. So whatever's inside us 
flows out of us. And the spiritual part of you can pick it up. It's helpful for you to be aware of that, of that dynamic flow. So we'll just, well, we can do it. I'll just give an example here. Well, don't mind using you as an example again. Can I use you as an example? There we go. Just come and stand there. I need someone to stand behind her. Now, so we know that the Holy Spirit lives within us. And so he fills us up. So we pray in tongues. Then our whole spirit can become filled until the whole atmosphere around me starts to be filled with the presence of God. Now, if I was to lay hands on her, then there can be a release of what's in me just through the contact of laying on hands. I could just go, power of God. And the power of God starts to touch her. But the power of God can touch her also without me connecting. If I was just to allow my heart to be filled with the presence of God, just release the power of God touch you now. Now she'll start to feel the power of God just come around her life, touching her. Now see, I didn't touch her that time, but something flowed. Your spirit, spirit substance flows. The things of the spirit flow beyond you. It's helpful to realize that. So therefore, just your presence in a place can affect what's going on around you. If you're conscious that God is inside you, you're filled with the presence of God, you begin to release the peace of God. We saw it come into the meeting just before. So your spirit is vital to your life. Your spirit can affect the quality of your life. Your spirit can gain thoughts and ideas. Your spirit can flow out of you. That's the most wonderful thing to think that something can flow out of you through your words or just being there that touches people. Can healing can flow. Life can flow. So we want to minister to one another shortly. We want to get that flow going. I want to give you an exercise to try. So, so those are some of the things our spirit can do. Here's another vital thing, and that is your spirit can be strengthened. In other words, you can become really strong in your spirit, or you can be very weak. So Ephesians 3 verse 16 I pray that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. So the inner man is your spirit being joined to the Holy Ghost. Strengthen means increased in dominion at with might, supernatural ability, dunamis. See? Now, so here's the thing, that the Holy Ghost can strengthen you. Now, how is that going to happen? Well, we want to, I'm glad you asked that because we want to see... <laughs> Exactly how that happens. I always ask the questions, how does that happen? If, if I don't know how it happens, how, well, it's wonderful. It sounds very, very good, but how does that happen? I still feel weak like I was yesterday. That's, see, we need to know what we can do that will engage the Holy Spirit working with us. How can I become strong on the inside? Now, if I wanted to gain physical strength like my son-in-law, then I'd have to <laughs> do a number of things. But the most important, I could eat the right food, drink the right drink. But here's the most important thing of all, you'd have to exercise. And all exercise involves the same kind of thing, various forms of it. But essentially, you have to exert your muscles against something that is resisting. You have to actually overcome the resistance. And in overcoming the resistance, you begin to build strength inside yourself. So we can pray that we'll be physically strong, and you know it doesn't work. You can pray you'll be physically fit. You know it doesn't work. You actually have to do something to get physically fit. You can pray that God will strengthen you, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. We should pray that God would strengthen us, but there are ways you can cooperate with the Holy Ghost for that to happen. So let's have a look at some. Here's some keys to being strong to growing your spirit or strengthening your spirit. One of them we've already seen. Number one, probably the first one everyone could do is praying in tongues. He that pray, speaks in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians 14 verse 4, strengthens himself, builds himself. So when you speak in the Holy Ghost, your own spirit can start to rise and become very strong. That's one of the ways you strengthen your spirit. So that's why praying fluently, praying forcefully, praying strongly strengthens and builds your spirit. It's not the only way, but you can do that anytime you want. 
Pray in tongues. Oh, la basha kada barota. And as you pray in tongues, let your spirit rise up inside you. Allow yourself to be aware I am growing and increasing in my spirit. And you come alive very quick, quickly. So that's one important way. You can pray that way all the time. So I'll get you to do a few of these things in a moment. A second thing you can do is to, uh, one of the things, uh, the most important thing that your spirit responds to is the Word of God. I can't emphasize enough how the Word of God will strengthen your spirit. But it doesn't strengthen your spirit just by reading it. You've got to get it in you. So one way that the Word of God can strengthen our spirit is when we learn to speak God's Word. Pray God's Word. Declare God's Word. This, this is a way... Jesus said, the words I speak, they are spirit and they are life. And so, notice in the Hebrews 3 verse 1, consider apostle and high priest of our confession or profession. So spoken words have power. They can release something. Okay? Now, so if the word of God spoken with a heart that believes it releases power, I can release power and strength into my own spirit by speaking to myself. Now, one of the things that secular people understand is the importance of self-talk, of what you say to yourself. Most people are talking to themselves all the time. I couldn't do that. Oh, that'd be hard. I don't know what's going to happen next. That's not going to work out. They've got a lot of endless, relentless, negative chatter going on. But if you were to start speaking the Word of God over your life, speaking the Word of God into your heart wholeheartedly, it would have an effect on you. I'm strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Your soul says, no, you're not. You're just a sissy boy. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And begin to confess the word of God. Let the word of God grow in your life. Speak it upon your life. Say what God says about you. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Everything God called me to do, I can do it through Christ who strengthens me. Now, you see, these are strong affirmations of God's word over your life. So praying the word of God Speaking the Word of God over your life will strengthen your spirit. I mean, try it a few times. We've already done a few exercises on it. It affects you. It affects you. Here's another thing. Worship is another way of strengthening uh, your, your, uh, your spirit man. Your spirit responds to the presence of God in worship. Now, uh, in 2 Corinthians 3, it says, We all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are transformed or totally changed. So what it's saying then is, Worship, when I engage God properly, changes me. You say, well, I don't feel changed. I just sung some songs and lift my hands up, didn't feel changed one little bit. Well, it's because worship is not just about singing songs and lifting your hands. It's about your heart engaging with God and experiencing God. So I have to actually do more than the externals. It's about my heart and the focus of my heart. And as we allow our heart, I see your spirit will easily engage God. It's your body and soul that are the resistant parts. So that's why I encourage you uh, uh, to do this. I encourage you to clap your hands. Make your body wake up. Wake up, body. I know it's after lunch. Wake up. It'll come alive. Just like that. In praying tongues. Help us. Now I can get my spirit alive very quickly. I've learned to do that very easily. But then the next part is actually the worshipping part. Now, worshipping is much more tender. And I have found it most helpful. The problem you find as you worship is your mind wanders. You start to think, oh, that'd be nice. Sit down and watch television. Cool, ba 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 shaka ba ba. Yes, that'd be lovely. I wonder what match is on right now. Cool, ba ka shaka ba You see? And we're not going to engage in worship much that way. See? So worship is consciously and intentionally letting your heart reach out and affirm the love and value you have for him. So if I just get my mind distracted, I'm not really worshiping. I'm going through the motions. They draw near with the lips, but the heart is not there because the mind has gone somewhere else. But if I was to just ponder that Jesus is with me and I just begin to say, oh, I love you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness to me. I just worship you. I just give you everything. I just love you, Lord. And Thank you for your presence. And I can start to begin to feel and become conscious that he's there. You feel the atmosphere starting to change. And it only took a moment or two. But you say, well, it doesn't happen for me. Well, it didn't happen for me either until I practiced. And I practiced worshiping. I practiced giving myself to him. Lift my hands up and dance and praise the Lord. And just give, I learned to just give myself to him. 
And I found sometimes, for me initially, I was so hung up, but I found it helpful just to just give myself physically and dance before the Lord and celebrate his presence and just give us, and then yield to him and say, I love you, Lord, just come and fill me and overflow and just crash on the bed, let him just come all over me. And I, I learned to explore what it is to just stand in the presence of God and enjoy him. And sometimes it can be just so delightful, you just want to just stay there admiring him. And worship engages him, and you just begin to feel his presence. And other things just seem to change. You come out of a time of worship, where you've engaged the presence of God, other things seem to not have so much importance anymore. It's the difficult part is getting rid of the baggage so you can engage him personally. So it's helpful to picture, to use your mind. That brings us to the next set. The next one of, of, uh, of growing in our spirit man is to develop our spiritual imagination. Now people sometimes get trouble with this. But notice what Paul says in 1 Timothy 4.15. Meditate on these things. Give yourself totally to them so that your progress or profiting might appear to all. So to meditate means to revolve around in your mind, to picture, to use your imagination to see spiritual truth. And it's true that whatever you set your heart on, your heart will open up too. So you set your heart on problems, you'll open up to problems. Set your heart on the Lord and meditate. So you may not feel anything much about the presence of God. You may not feel that he's there at all. Uh, you may think he's a long way off. I lived with God a long way off for a long part of my life. But then I learned that if I would meditate and picture truth, just imagine the truth. In other words, use your imagination. The Bible says, love your Lord with all your heart and soul and mind and strength. That would include my imagination. So if I was to just imagine what it is to stand in the presence of God who loves me, and hold the picture that the Bible says of what he's like. His countenance, his eyes, his face, his beauty. All that he is. And just meditate. Now what does that feel like to be welcomed by him like that? And so just imagine seeing the scripture. I have found an interesting thing happens. That as you do that you begin to write into your heart the truth. If I was to say what is this sum of these, this multiplication problem? Three times four. Three fours are? You know, you didn't have to stop and think about it because you'd learnt it by heart. How did you learn it by heart? By repetition. So repetition of, of seeing the same thing, welcoming the same thing, affirming the same thing, it begins to grow in our heart as a spiritual reality. And so it doesn't really take long once you've started to meditate and hold your mind fixed. So I've meditated in Psalm 23 on Jesus being my shepherd. I've meditated in Revelations about him being the great and glorious coming king. And each time you meditate, you begin to see him differently. So initially, you have to allow your mind, you know, I just read the scripture, try to get the picture, and then I imagine what that would be like and just stay there imagining it, trying to feel it, and then the Holy Spirit takes over and a flow comes. I'll just show you again. You can be my helper again. Mary, that'll be a great idea. Come and be my helper again. I want to get you to, I want you to, we'll pray for lots of people shortly. But I want you to just, just to help me in this one. Now, I want you just to close your eyes. <clears throat> and I want you just to be open for how God might touch you. I'm not going to try to minister to you or pray for you in any way. What I want to do instead is just holding your hand just to stay joined to you. What I want to do is to just meditate that Jesus is my friend, my wonderful friend, my shepherd. Thank you, Lord. You're my shepherd and friend. So I begin to meditate and see him there standing just in front of me. I begin to see everything, see his eyes so full of love and life, countenance so joyful. Just reach out to receive his love. And you see, the moment I locked in, she started to feel the overflow. Meditation enables you to open your spirit and heart to the truth of the Bible. That's why we're to not only read the Bible, write the Bible, memorize the Bible, but meditate, allow our mind to reflect on it. There's at least three different ways of meditating I'm aware of now. But one way of meditating is to meditate into encounter with God. 
you don't hear much about that. You can meditate over a truth of scripture and begin to look at it and begin to gain insights and see how it might apply to your life. That's one way of looking at scripture. You can meditate on scripture also to enter in and experience God. That's another way of meditating. You can meditate on scripture just to build it into your heart by repeating it over and over. So there's at least three things that I'm aware that we could do with scripture. One for insight, one for impartation, and the other to open up the realm where God is. So Mary, would you come up and describe for us what you experience? Well, <laughs> it took place pretty quick, so I'll just take this off. So you've got access to talk. Here we go. There we go, just talking to that. I just felt... Um, Oops. <laughs> just overwhelmed by his love, by his presence. It just... Um, I couldn't stand. I, yeah. still can I can stand. still feel it. Yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, I can't stop yeah. it. Stop there. <laughs> I can't. It's, yeah. it's, it's just overwhelming. Yeah. His presence. Yeah, see, so some, see how it got open. Meditation opened the way for that to happen. And it's a strong presence of God. Yeah. There it is. Whoo! Holy Ghost, come now. Praise the Lord. She's feeling the presence now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Be really good for us to just do a couple of things then, shall we? Why don't we just do that? We'll just put into practice at least a couple of the exercises we've learnt now, shall we? Now, you're gonna need to you're gonna need a help for this. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a chair to fall back on. So there's no we can't catch everyone. And so we're not gonna catch anyone. <laughs> you have to catch yourself. <laughs> so so what I'll, I'll give you three things that we're going to do. We're going to do the three things that we just learned would strengthen your spirit man. One of them was that we would uh, speak strongly in tongues. Two, we'll confess the word of God. And each time we do something, again, notice what it does for you. Then the third thing we'll do is we'll meditate. And I'll just help you with the meditating in just focusing your mind. Now, some people, their mind doesn't focus easily. It's like a butterfly. It goes everywhere. Uh, that's just a matter of reining in your mind, training your mind to stay in one place and not go everywhere else. And once you've trained your mind, you can stay there and you can lock in and stay there a long, long time. And we realize then our mind can be trained to serve our spirit. Now, initially, you may find it a little bit difficult. Everyone's experience will be a bit different, but let's see what God does anyway. Eh? Why not try? Okay, come on then, stand up then where you are and uh, then position yourself so you've got a seat. So should you fall over unexpectedly, you don't fall on anyone else. And uh, if you're a very, very big person, you may want your chair backed up to the wall so you don't just go clean head over heels, straight over into someone else. There we go, Tim, straight up against the wall. <laughs> okay, we ready? So why don't you shake your body, just loosen your body up. We've just had lunch and so we're a little bit all getting tired and no energy. <laughs> Holy Ghost! Uh, all right then, now let's begin to pray in tongues strongly as we can and let's stir our spirit up. Praise the Lord. Okay, next one. We're going to make this declaration. I am strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I am strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I am strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I am strong in the Lord and the power of His might. I am strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Well, that's good. How many felt some falling over already? <laughs> okay, then. Now, you, you should find that the energy level has shifted considerably in you. And uh, as you meditate on those scriptures and decree them more and more, they start to become alive. They lift your spirit the moment you speak them. Now, I want you just to meditate. Just reach your hands out. Just in front of you like that, just like your hands are upturned and open. And you have your eyes closed and your legs resting 
just against the seat. See, because if you fall over, you'll just want to sit down. Otherwise, you'll tumble and take three or four people with you. And we try to avoid that if we can. Okay, now we're going to meditate. So let's be okay, pray, pray quietly in tongues for a little. Just let your spirit flow. And a meditate means I'll fix my mind and begin to focus my attention on Scripture, on the Lord. So just stop praying now. I want you with your eyes closed. I want you to take the Scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. See? Now, that means he is my friend. So use your imagination to extend out and see Jesus standing just before you, about one foot away, and he's your friend. Try to imagine what a friend would be like. Eyes blazing, full of glory and purity and full of joy to see you. That's what a friend is. They're always happy to see you. See him like that. His countenance, very happy to see you. Friends are always happy to see one another. They smile and their high face lights up. See him like that. The Lord is my friend. Look at him a little harder. There it is. He is the Lord God Almighty. Just full of life. Full of light. And amazing love. Meditate on that. Just think about that. His hands are reaching out to you. That's what friends do. They open their hands wide. Oh, so good to see you. Now as you reach out to him, just reach out. He does love you. Imagine what that love would feel like if he just reached out and hugged you and his love just flowed into your life and you just received it now. Just receive it. Just receive it right now. Receive the love of God right now. Thank you, Lord. Oh, 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 hard to stand up as you stay meditating on that. Now, just stay relaxed so you can receive. Some people are not used to receiving. They're used to doing. You've got to give up doing. And just, Lord, I just receive. <sighs> Holy Spirit, come, make Jesus real right now. Ooh. So you keep your mind just fixed on him. Now begin to worship him. Oh, Jesus, I surrender to you. I give myself to you. Let's receive your love now. Receive your goodness into my life. He is overwhelming. Imagine the God of heaven and he's your friend. How amazing. I love on him. Allow your heart and spirit to just reach around. Jesus, I just so love you. I receive your love into my heart. Come, Lord. Touch people. Touch people who are watching. Let them experience your love and your presence flowing. Now, as you're reaching out to him, what do you think he would want to say to you? Listen for him. Let his thoughts just rise in your mind. They'll be quite personal. I love you. Let him talk with you. Enjoy him. Spirit is made for encounters with God. The Spirit is made to experience Him. We can have many levels of encounter, but we can always pray in tongues and meditate and always become conscious of His presence. And sometimes it can really overwhelm and you can have visions or hear things or see things. It can begin to open up and it's like you enter into heaven itself. Come, Lord. So it does our spirit good to be in the presence of God like this. 
It builds your spirit when you pray in tongues. It builds your spirit when you confess the Word of God and meditate in the Word of God. These things build your spirit. If you worship Him, it builds your spirit. Wonderful Jesus. We just thank you for your presence here right now. Touching lives. <sighs> Come, Lord, upon people right now. Thank you, Lord. Now, some of you will be very, very engaging in the presence of God, and others, your mind will be going all over, and thinking, oh my, what am I supposed to feel? What am I, what's supposed to happen? This will take you away from where you need to be. Don't try and analyze things. Just, Jesus is my friend. I believe the scripture. He's my shepherd and friend. So what does that look like, and what does that feel like? Just dwell in that, and just embrace that truth into your heart. There are many truths in the Bible we can meditate in that will bring us near him. This one's my favorite. We can meditate on the cross. Become deeply aware of what he's done for us. So meditation will help you in your spirit, man. It'll help you grow and become sensitive. Help you become conscious of God. It's just so few people really do it. But once you've learned how to do this and engage God, then your life begins to change. All right then. So let's just, well, everyone wants to stay meditating. <laughs> All right then, so we'll just open our eyes again and just come back out. You can go there any time, of course. How many people just really felt God connect with them or they connected with God? You really felt the presence of God. Wow, look at that, so many people. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? So these are keys you can build your spirit, man. And of course, the last one I've put down there is uh, obedience. We've got to learn to obey what God t speaks to us about. And uh, so using your, your spiritual senses are developed as you exercise, every time you say yes to God, your spirit strengthens. Every time you say no to the devil, your spirit strengthens. When you are slow and resist uh, responding to God, your spirit is weakened. So we want to be strong in our spirit, man. How many found that helped you? You've kind of got touched by God. Some of you are quite weepy because you've experienced God. Would you like to tell us about your experience? Can you? Some people may not be able to. Let's try. I felt it in here and here, and I was bending over. I started looking up, but then you know, I felt it in here, and I just wanted to bend over. And then, yeah, it was wow. just, oh, God's love for me. I God's guess, love just, for you, yeah, exactly. It makes me cry. <laughs> yeah, very good, very good. So you started by lifting up because your consciousness is God is up there, and that's okay. Yeah. Lift up your hands and so on. But then, as the weight of His presence started to come around you, that's what caused you to bend over. Called the weight of glory, yeah. What happened to you, Mary? What did you experience? Similar. Similar kind of yeah, thing. Similar. Um, just experiencing a wave of his love and peace and just overwhelming. Just wow. couldn't Wasn't so hard either. It. No. Anyone else like to tell what they experienced? Yes? <laughs> nice one. <laughs> we meaning you and him. <laughs> awesome. That's great. Brian, what about you? You needed to get delivered, were you? That was supposed to be the last session. <laughs> so you felt like you want to cough, like something in you obstructing you. Right. Right into cough, to gain breath.
tangible presence you really strongly felt. Okay, someone else felt something like that? Yes, Jill? Like a warmth. Well, I feel his arms around you. Isn't that wonderful? Yes? Wow, wonderful. That's good. We all want that. Yeah. Anyone else had a different experience? Yes? Just you. Isn't that good? Isn't that great? And that's accessible all the time. Yes? What did you experience? Yeah. So you gain perspective on your life when you come into the presence of God. It re refocuses your, 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 your life. Oh, that's wonderful. Anyone, one other one to share? Well, that was a great time together, wasn't it, eh? Yeah. Just enjoying the presence of God. And so moving in authority is not just about all strength and shouts and rah. It's actually about the substance of your connection with God and expressing that through words and actions in the earth. And it's, it's, this is the thing. We can grow in these areas, then our whole life and ministry, everything changes. Amen?